You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on KLOS. How are you? <clears throat> that was Deep Purple, Burn, and before that was Black Sabbath. Electric Funeral from the album Paranoid. Talking about Paranoid, <laughs> got, got my guest there, Linda Romano. <laughs> I'm certainly not paranoid. I'm certainly <laughs> not. Linda Ramone. Yes. How are you, darling? I'm very well, and you? Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. Yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. Now it's over. How old are you? You don't want to say? Uh, Woody Pekia says 58, so I'll go with that. That's probably wrong then. So then. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't ladies like saying their age? And they, they say it's rude if you asked uh, a woman their age. What, what difference does it make? It's just an age. I don't feel my age, so I don't really care. You don't look your age, whatever it is. Thank you. You've got good genes. I do, Italian genes. Because you've had no facial change, have you? You no. haven't done anything to your boat race. It's like no, natural. I do like Botox and little little things, but no facelift. No. Yeah. Oh, you is do that what you, you mean? You do, yeah, you do a bit of Botox? Yeah. I tried that once. It was awful. I couldn't move my forehead. Uh, you can't see my forehead, so it's okay. It took a year <laughs> off me. But, it did? But then come, come back older... When it wore off. I mean, but I don't mind when people do. Some people get facelifts and they look great. But when I said something to you, you said if I got a facelift, you wouldn't look at me anymore. So that put it on the back burner. Um, I think the problem is, I think little bits and bobs ain't bad. Mm -hmm. But the trouble is, most people, when they go under, they think they should get more because they're going under. As opposed to getting their money's worth as opposed to just getting a little thing done and they're like I'm on I don't want to go through all this anesthesiology and all that just for a little bit but then they come out looking like you know yeah I don't have that I like to go for a little of the opera huh I like to go for very little yeah. like when I go to my guy I don't do my lips or anything either like so everybody has a different approach to how they want to look I want to look just Na you know natural yeah and a little bit younger if you can yeah you know but no, I'm not into heavy uh, it's, plastic it's, surgery. It's, a, it's definitely an L.A. thing. People in Europe, they're kind of catching up a little bit, but a lot of people in Europe are a bit natural more, I think, than, than Calif California, Los Angeles, but Holly I do, Hollywood. I do think, though, people and your looks for a woman, they're a little harder on the men. Because For sure. women age and they go, oh, did you see that old bag? For sure. And a guy goes, oh, he, you know, he's... Look, he has a little gray, always distinguished. No women look distinguished. They just look old. Huh. Yeah. So that's what happened, I think. An another another, another uh, thing that it's harder to be a woman. Yeah, I... You, yeah, have, but, you have to have kids. You have to carry bleeding kids for nine months. Yeah, but I wouldn't want to be a man, ever. I mean, I love being a girl. I love dressing up. I love collecting dolls. I love... <laughs> I, you know, I love all my hobbies. I love yeah. poster collecting. Yeah. I mean, so for me, it's really nice. You yeah. know, but it's just like every, you know, some people hate exercising. I love exercising. I get up every morning. I exercise. What do you do? Pilates? No, I don't do Pilates. I do elliptical at the house. Elliptical? Yeah. What's that? It's like a machine. And oh, you, you put the arms. Yeah. You can do it. That guy, yeah. what's his name? Who had that machine? Remember him with the ponytail, the muscle guy, blonde hair? I don't Tony, remember him. I, Tony Little, I think his name was. Yeah. You can do it! He was like, he looked ridiculous with his arms <laughs> going and his legs. Well, you know, it all started with Jacqueline. <laughs> yeah. That was a while ago. There's a lot of money and all that. Well, listen, you are what you eat. That That is a never true word, man. You I'm, know. I'm totally down with that. A lot of people ain't got a clue what they're eating. No. They so, don't even acknowledge what they're eating. What have you been eating lately? You're looking at my tummy when you say that. <laughs> I resent that. No, I'm just curious. How are you sticking with your diet? <laughs> <laughs> I am. I just don't do enough exercise. But you hike. Oh, but it's too hot to hike well, now. Well, I do, and I, but I, I'm kind of... I went for a good one last night. I went to an Italian restaurant in Beverly Hills, and I just had a... What did I have? I had, um, I had some shrimp. And, and a salad, right? Mm -hmm. no, barely no carbs. And then I walked for uh, 40 minutes on the flats around Century City or around Beverly. It's great at night. There's no one around. Yeah. And it was still 75 degrees, by the way. 
I mean, that's nice, but it doesn't really burn calories. See, the elliptical burns calories. So. What do you mean it don't burn calories? Well, I, I was wa- sweating. Walking, me, yeah, no. well, because you don't like exercising, but. <laughs> I mean, not for anything. You need to burn calories to lose weight. Yeah, but... I wanna... You don't want to stay your weight. You want to lose a couple of pounds. Yeah, I know. You know, so... Leave me alone. You got to, you know, burn. You got to burn, baby. You know, burn. I am the god of hellfire! <laughs> and I bring you... And I tell you... Uh, that's a great song. Yeah. <laughs> so what's going on? You got the thing. 26th of August. Yes. It's Sunday at yep. the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. And you're screening... Barbarella, a sci-fi classic with Cinespear. If you want tickets, tickets are uh, info at johnnyramone.com. And Cinespear. Cinespear, this is the second year you've had them involved? Uh Uh-huh. Last year at the last second, this year more so. And I'm excited because they do it every weekend at Hollywood Forever. And they're amazing. Like you get there, it's all organized. And, you know, it's John and Aaliyah. And she does like all those like great photo booths. I mean, to so me, every, every time there's a movie being shown there, no, I don't mean Johnny Romero. I mean, they have movies all the time. Is that is that all Cinespear? Uh huh. Yeah. So we just went to see Vertigo. I mean, they have like great movies and they've done a great job. And since I'm already at Hollywood forever all the time because of Johnny's statue, yeah. it was nice to partner with them because, you know, John's a huge, you know, the guy who does Cinespear, a huge Ramones fan. Yeah. So he's all excited, you know. So, and my, my, is a little di- bit different because I do a party backstage and we have musical guests like you and Billy Idol and Fred, Fred. and stuff. We've had great people. Who we got this year? You. And I'm waiting for you to tell me who you, you got. <laughs> oh, okay. So if anyone's listening out there and they know who they are, let us know. You coming? It, have, you, have you reached out to Fred again? or Fred's coming. Oh, he is? Yeah. Um, what, yeah, were you, were you thinking about Moby? I was. I mean, because the Barbarella, they have like this more like electronic song. Yeah. So. So something more electronic. Well, maybe a little more like psychedelic because it's a psychedelic night. And then we have Howie Pyro DJing. So he, you know, he'll yeah. do punk, of course. And everybody, he'll you know? stay in the theme of it. He's, yeah, but he's good. He's great. And he'll do like psychedelic. And we also have the pop-up shop in the mausoleum where I put all... Do you ever go in and see all the Ramones memorabilia and the movie stuff we put in there? I don't go in. When I get there, I just hide in the trailer till it's I time know, to do something. But it's amazing because I put a lot of like amazing collectibles in there. Like Johnny's guitar and leather jacket and Tommy's, you know, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame you, award. And you sell t-shirts as well, right? And yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. But the collection to go see. And this year I have uh, Danny from Lethal Amounts. And he's going to do, uh, like, all these cult posters, like yeah. giant ones, you know. And so it's amazing to see that. And then you see the movie. I mean, it's just such a fun event. Only you sit outside and you can bring. Well, that's that's the good part. Isn't yeah. It? And but and you can bring your own food or you can buy food. Yeah. But, I mean, you buy a ticket and you sit there all night and you get entertained. Yeah. And Johnny Ramone loved movies. And yeah. Johnny Ramone statues there. So what, what was his favorite movie of all time? Bride of Frankenstein. Was that the old one, the black and white yeah. one? With old Lon Chaney. No, it was it. It was Lon, Lon Chaney, wasn't it? Boris Karloff. That's what I said, Boris yeah. Karloff. Don't I, ha- I have a, a half sheet of Bride of Frankenstein. Half sheet? Yeah. What's that? You know, movie posters. Oh, a, half a poster. Sheet. A half sheet. Yeah. So there's like, you know. Is that worth dough? Yeah. <laughs> is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Christmas is just around the corner, <laughs> Linda. Let's play some music. We're here with Linda Ramone. We're going to play the Ramones. I can't oh. control myself, which is um, a Trogs song, and it's from the album Acid Eaters, which basically the whole album is all kind of covers of psychedelic cosmic songs. So they were definitely into psychedelic. Yeah, Jonesy's jukebox, Carla West. <laughs> You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox and Carla West. That was Hawkwind. Silver Machine with the late, great Lemmy on vocals. Then we had Arthur Brown, Fire. And before that, the Ramones. I can't control myself. (laughs) You can't, can you? 
<laughs> but you don't have a wife yet, so. I'm never going to uh. have a bleeding wife. Are you kidding me? Why? I don't want one. They're good companions. Well, you got a wife? <laughs> no, I have a hookah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind hookahs. They're, they're good. They come and go. Done. <laughs> Quick. Boom, boom. Next. Mm, I yeah. see. I see. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> when did they record that Acid Eaters, the Ramones? It's all covers, right? Yeah. 90s. Later on. You don't even bleed no, do you? Not the exact date in the 90s. I just remember they had a hard time picking the songs everybody liked because everybody had always, you know, it was Johnny and Joey always headlining who was going to do what so songs. They, they butted heads then? A little bit, only because, you know, they did it. Listen, everyone could say whatever, but the truth is, they really didn't hate each other to that point because they stayed together the whole time. Johnny, you've known Johnny. He loves to aggravate you. Yeah. That was his, his thing. thing yeah. You know, so if you go outside and the sky would be blue, he go, oh, God, look, there's some clouds. And you know it's perfectly blue. But he loved that. So with Joey, it was back and forth. So picking the songs, you know, if Johnny wouldn't let anybody else but him and Joey do the deciding. But if Joey wanted something Johnny didn't want, then Johnny would go, oh, well, that one counts, too. His opinion counts. But if the opinion went against Johnny, then it wouldn't count. So. Got it. Why didn't Johnny ever play any leads? What He didn't like to play? Is, no. Is it because he couldn't? Or he just didn't want to? He just wanted to play chords? I, I never asked him that. I always because wanted to ask him that. Because he felt chords just gave him the power he wanted out of the guitar, and he taught himself. He never took guitar lessons. No, I don't mean me neither. But um, he, you had Walter Law play a couple of leads. Yeah, Walter like, was later. my friend. Yeah. And Johnny got mad at him then a little Why? because he... Walter would come and order cigarettes and lunch, uh, and Johnny would be like, "I ain't paying for your cigarettes." Johnny was very frugal. I know. So frugal, but not cheap. Frugal yeah. is different. But I think he just felt that the energy and he was very angry and intense that that was the sound of the guitar he wanted yeah. so that was downstroke he's the king of downstroke yeah. Yeah. you know i mean it influ you know he influenced so many guitar players and he did i mean back then in the punk days i mean it was amazing that he would say to people you just have to get out there and play guitar yeah. you can't sit in your room and practice your whole life away yeah you know I mean... Did he ever noodle when he was at home? Never. With an acoustic? No. And later on, when if he had to learn uh, songs, he'd have John Fashanti come over and show him Ramon songs. Because Fashanti knows everything like yeah. that. And he'd be like, no, he forgot. Wow. And he wouldn't care. Mm -hmm. No. He'd only have to when it came time to writing songs for the record. Yeah. And practicing. But no, he never practiced at home. You know, he just loved his hobbies. He did baseball. Yeah. He was a baseball fanatic. What do they call that when they do it? Drink? You know, they put money on, uh, what do you call it? Oh, fantasy. Yeah. Fantasy baseball. Yes, Johnny's had made a lot of enemies with fantasy baseball. <laughs> we moved to L.A. and I go, one thing, I don't want you to do this out here because we have friends now. And Same thing, fantasy baseball. Got mad at Josh Richmond, got mad at this one, that one. That's just how he was. He always had a win. Why, is he so, why was he so angry? He grew up that way. He didn't like... His, was his dad... Did his dad beat him? No. He was he, in the military, right? He... <laughs> For 10 minutes. Yeah, but... Academy. He, yes, twice. Was he actually... Did he actually go into the army, you know? No. He so went... Mili a academy school, right? For high it? school. Yeah. He asked his parents. That's why he was so... Yeah. Because he had that instilled in him, that... that. He loved being in charge, but he loved the... Like, even when he would pack to go on tour... Yeah. He'd... I'd do all the wash and everything like and that. And put it in but a little suitcase. He'd, he'd fold, fold everything, everything perfectly. Yeah, that's where he got that I from. I mean, but he was but he was like that in the house with even all the videos. Yeah. Everything was alphabetized, yeah. you know. I mean, that's how he lived. That's so the good that's, thing about mi a military, to, to make you be accountable for things. Well, yeah. Could you imagine if the Ramones didn't have that? I mean, It wouldn't have lasted. No. And that was the one thing Dee Dee always said. You know, without Johnny, you know, 
it, there would have never been the Ramones. But then, of course, you go without Joey and Dee Dee writing the sure. songs and Tommy. You know. But he was the push. He was the force to yeah, keep it going. Yeah, he wrote down every job they ever played, the percentage, and the attendance. Yeah. So if they went back to a club the following, you know, a couple of months later, he'd know how much percentage they would go into. And oh, man. I mean, he was like, he's. Ha I still have every book. So when he was alive, didn't you have a manager? He was the manager? Gary Kerr first. Managed well, and what the did Ramones. He do if Johnny uh, did everything. Well, you know, you got to book shows and talk to promoters. Yeah. They had premier talent agent, you know, that kind of stuff. But as as from day to day, yeah. I mean, he would, you know, he'd leave the club and he'd say, we went into percentage. If the club owner said, no, you didn't, wow. he'd go, well, this is, he was very, you know, he was supposed to be an accountant. That was. Sounds they, like it. You know, but he wasn't. He was Johnny Ramone, one of the most influential guitar players of all time. So what you're saying is he, he was one of the most influential guitar players of all time. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because I feel that his to kids saying you just got to get out there pick up a guitar yeah. and not practice and be who you are yeah. because listen who's your favorite guitar player well part of guitar for me is it's not technical it's whether you have your own sound right you and know, how many people don't have their own sound? millions yeah they're, they're very good technically mm -hmm. a lot of people but they all sound like someone else or whatever you know so that's why he sounds like johnny ramon yeah. and, and singers the same Right. When singers sound like, you know, like Axl Rose. When you hear him, you know it's Axl Rose straight mm -hmm. away. Yeah, you know it's Joey Ramone. Yeah. You know it's Joe Strummer. Yeah. You know, you know it's Lux from The Cramps. Yeah. You, you know, that's, well, that's what makes a great guitar player to me. Yeah. They have their own sound. Yeah, that's and it. They, they hit one chord, you know it's Jimi Hendrix. You hit a chord and you go, forget about it. That sounds you know, like. If you had to say who is your favorite guitar player, me? Yeah. Who would I say it is? Yeah. Mick Ronson. Mm, interesting. He did do a lot. That's true. He was my big influence when I was a teenager. The Spiders from Mars. And and I don't know, he, he, he never got... He was underrated. He never got a lot of credit for his, his talents. There's, there's a lot of guitar players I like, though. Yeah. Johnny's <laughs> was Jimmy Page and Jeff Beck and Leslie West, his top three. He just played... Uh, Monday night, mm -hmm. Jeff Beck down south with uh, Paul Rogers and the bird from uh, Heart, the singer oh. Wilson. Uh, Nancy, is it Nancy the singer? Anne. Yeah. And who do you think is your favorite punk rock band? Favorite punk rock band? Yeah, you can't pick the Sex Pistols. You're dying for me to say the Ramones, aren't you? No, I know it isn't. That's okay. Johnny's second pick was The Clash after the Ramones. You were third. So hell with this guy. <laughs> Get out! Get out! <laughs> he, it, it is true, though. He thought the Ramones, the Clash, and the Sex Pistols were going to be the three biggest bands of all time. Yeah. I mean, that is the truth. And things would have been different if the three of you were. Well, I think the things would have been different if we didn't break up, too. That didn't help when no. we broke up. But um, I, like, I like the first Damned album. That's one of my yeah. favorite punk, if you want to call it, albums. Yeah, Dan were great. I saw The Damned. The first album. I saw The Damned with The Dead Boys. Yeah. It was like a weekend. Yeah. Now, what did you think of X-Ray Specs? Uh, not really. I mean, they were okay. There was a couple of good songs. Did you like The Jam? Uh, okay. Okay. Is that the questions you're asking me? That you were going to ask me? No, I was just you curious. You were going to ask me some questions, you said. Well, I... Is that it? Do you feel, though, in your place in history as a punk gu rock guitar player? Yeah. Do you feel you're there? I, I don't even know what that means. Do you, are you happy? Well, put it this way. In the Rolling Stones, best hundred guitar players, I was like 97. I barely got in the door. Yeah. Why do you think that is, though? I don't know. I think you got an answer. No, I'm just wondering. My answer I is... I don't do a lot. I did the album, did the professionals, then I really didn't, I but wasn't current. The professionals were great, though. There were some great songs. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just punk rock really never got their due. I, I agree. You know, and I, I agree. always say No that, one ever plays it on the radio. I say that to Billy Idol me. all the time. You know, you know, I play the Ramones a lot. You know that, right? I hope so. I listen to you a lot. You probably me. get someone telling you as well. No. But I did say that to Billy Idol. I think he should be the king of punk rock. 
Why? Because, like, they have all these other things for headbanger balls, and they, hair metal gets all this, like, coverage, and they do all these award shows. But there's no award shows for punk, ever. Yeah. I, is it because everyone's dead? I mean, I guess a lot of people who would be great, like, you know, Stiv from the Dead Boys and Lux and the Ramones. And when you have all these award shows and all these old farts show up, it looks kind of pathetic. Right. I, I would just leave it where okay. it is. That's my, that's my opinion. Yeah, well, that's the punk way. Well, I just think, you know... But it we, was a long time ago. It was a great moment for three or four years. Leave it there. I don't, you know, I don't want to... I'm not that guy who was 21 anymore. Right. I mean, I am, but I'm not. So that's one of the reasons I think rock and roll doesn't exist at this point anymore, because nobody's young in it. We have a lot of friends that go out and play and make money, and that's great. Yeah, but to but, me, rock, rock and roll, the overall rock and roll, should be... A young man's game. Yep. When you when you you know you got no body fat, you're naive. That's what that's what I can roll. Mm -hmm. That's why Johnny retired. Yeah. It should be like baseball. It should be a cutoff switch. Mm -hmm. Like after you can't hit the bat anymore, knock it on the head. Cause Don't keep trying to just do it just to get a couple of bucks. Because people it looks will pathetic. always say, "Why are you retiring?" He's like, "I'm old." Yeah. What do you think about the Stones still playing? Well, they're kind of the exception because they've yeah. always been old. <laughs> Yeah. Now, I mean, who ever remembers Brian Jones? Nobody. I mean, it's they've been around so long. They play the hits. I must admit, I saw them because Pearl Jam, Pearl Jam opened up for Rolling Stones, and we went, me and Johnny, to see that. And they do have a lot of hits, so it's a good, it's a good show. But they are so old. They must love it though. I don't. I don't. They can't be doing it for the dough. They must be no. like billionaires at this point, especially but Mickey. I Keith. feel. With young kids now, we don't have new young rock and roll kids. Like, you don't grow up like I grew up, and I saw Circus and Cream magazine. I had, you know, T-Rex hanging on my wall, you know. Yeah. And Alice Cooper and yeah. all. I, there's nobody now that's young. Well, there is a bunch of bands. It's just that you don't really know about it, you know. Because there's not any... There's no way to. There's no magazines. There's no stations. Yeah, but there's now. There's more information than ever. Yeah, but don't it, because of it, it. I think it just diluted everything. Well, it does. You're overloaded with information I mean, and stuff that you, you see one, something one minute, the next minute you forgot about it. You're onto something else. So that's that's a negative, I suppose. Because when you know back in the day, there was only a few outlets where where you would know about bands. It was a music paper. It was a Enemy. show, Top of the Pops, whatever. Top of the Pops was great. But now it's but, you, you've got so much overload, like TV shows. You don't know what one to watch because there's 500 of them, you know. And now nobody talks. They just text. Well, I don't mind that part. Yeah. Not talking. Why? You talk all day. Uh -huh. <laughs> you talk for a living. No, I think it makes you antisocial. Let's play some music. I'm going to play the Ramones. That's nice. Beat on the Brat, Jonesy's Jukebox, Carlo West with my guest, Linda Ramones. Jonesy's jukebox, KLOS. That was uh, the damned new rose. Before that was the Ramones beat on the brat. I guess Linda Ramone. Hello. How are you? I'm quite well. That's great. Getting ready for Johnny Ramone's tribute. Oh, when is that? August 26th at Hollywood Forever. Is that a Sunday? <laughs> it is. That's great. And we'll partner with Cinespear. Yeah, forget so. about it. Uh, what was I going to say to you? I forgot. Um, that you like the damned, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And the buzzcocks. I like the Ramones too, don't worry. I, I know. I know you I, don't think I like them. Well, Go you're, on, you're talk English, about it. you know, English people like English bands and, you know, more no, sometimes. I like a lot of American bands. <laughs> yes. I like a lot of English bands yeah. and American bands. What do you think was a better, more fun for you as a movement? Glitter rock or punk rock? Well, I love glam because when you're a teenager, that's yeah. when you're influenced the most. So, who do you? Who's your favorite out of like glitter rock? Is it Slade? No, it's Sl it's Bowie and Roxy Music. Okay, what do you think of Slade? I like Slade. I love Slade. You like Sweet? Who was we were talking about Slade yesterday with D Snyder? We had a long chat about Slade. That was so bizarre. Was, really? Yeah. Does he like Slade? 
Yeah. Yeah. Slade was great. I saw Slade, too. Slade. Uh, Where'd you see them? At the Felt Forum. The Felt? Yeah. Felt Forum. In Where, New, where's that? In, in New, New York? York. Yeah. And it in was. Manhattan? Yeah. It was like 13 and Aerosmith opened up for Slade. And how was it? Amazing. What but I was a Slade fan. So you didn't like Aerosmith at the time? It was. You know, I can still remember to this day, I saw Steven Tyler on stage and he had these like black and white pants on yeah. that were like skin tight. I just thought they looked like the Rolling Stones. Well, they basically you know, was Mick and Keith. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, and I wasn't a huge Rolling Stones fan. Yeah. I was really, you know. Based, glam. You're glam. I like New York Dolls. Yeah. Yeah. And Slade. So, I mean, then I started to go see bands. So they, that. They were that good was, live Slade, right? They, they could were play. great. Uh, the sound and the energy. Yeah. From them, I mean, you know. Was that a big place, the forum? The, the one you it was about? smaller than Madison Square Garden. It was yeah. like right next door. So it was, you know, they weren't that. Slade never really became big in America. What one did you fancy in Slade? Uh, none of them. <laughs> I actually liked Mark Farner better when I was 12 and saw Grand Funk Railroad he at Madison a, Square Garden. He was a With stud. my brother. He looked like yeah. he should have been one of the Chippendales. Yeah, Mark Farner was like, I was like a little girl. I remember going home and thinking, wow. Because he that had guy. The, like, you know, and you don't really think like that when, you, well, I'm Catholic, so I certainly wasn't thinking yeah, but that. You, you still but, have faults whether you're Catholic or not. Yes, but I was thinking, boy, he was great looking, Mark Farner. I remember seeing them and Humble Pie at Hyde Park, a free show, and I was like a mile away, but all I remember is that long hair buff with that silver thing around his uh his arm and his, his and his white pants with his package <laughs> grand funk was i'm a great like band. 12 years old I'm, <laughs> that's what i remember <laughs> it's true yeah he was he, yeah. was, he was a stud he was and then, a good chippendales guy for sure well yeah and then well johnny patterned himself after mark farner and joe delisandro yeah yeah that was his two like guys because at one point before the Ramones, he had his hair down the middle and long. Yeah. So that L was his two. Little Joe. Little Joe. He had a great face, little Joe, man. Great face, yeah. Beautiful face. I mean, you know, he's he's good, little Joe. He we, came to one of the tributes. Yeah, I know. The yeah. one when we played Crybaby. Yeah. Because he was in Crybaby, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. John Waters. Yeah. That was a fun one. Tracy Lord. They're all Johnny fun, Depp. man. They're all fun. That's why we can't wait for this year. Yeah. I love going. Maybe I should bring some Jonesy's Jukebox t-shirts to sell. Of course. You don't mind? Never. Uh -uh. I love having more merch. I think it's nice for people to buy whatever they want. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And you can sign some and then sell them for more. Oh, forget about yeah. it. Yeah. We're going to visit the Duke. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back, we're going to more chit-chat and rock and roll with my guest, Linda Ramone. The Hollywood Forever Cemetery... This year is Sunday, August the 26th, the screening of Barbarella. If you want tickets, the info's at johnnyramone.com. Listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on Cal OS. That was Grand Funk Railroad. Sorry, road, not railroad. <laughs> that track was called Locomotion. <laughs> Are you making fun? I come from New York. No, no. <gasps> Why is it all about you? That was just my mistake. Okay. Locomotion was originally done by Little Eva. Mm -hmm. Do you remember her? Of course. Then we had the Buzzcocks, Fiction Romance, then Slade, Take Me Back Home, Generation X, My Generation. Beautiful. Great music. Yeah. See, that's what, why I do? See what I do for you, man? That's why you're the king. See what I do for you. That's why you're Jonesy's jukebox, the I king. Know. That's why I get the Starbucks. Mm-hmm. And the star on the uh, on the walk soon. I ain't got it yet. I know. <laughs> why? I don't know. I don't. I'm Let's get you a good. nice spot. Let's go look today. No, I, you, me Hollywood Boulevard. You kidding me? <laughs> I'm gonna shoot myself and go down there today. Wow. It's just a horrible, depressing place. But I'll take a star. The star is great. Yeah. I think it's, that would really that's fitting for you to have a star. Yeah. Um, do you want to plug your uh, show? Uh, the Johnny Ramone do Tribute? It. Do you want me yeah. to do it? Yeah, I like your voice. Okay. Johnny Ramone Tribute at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, Sunday, August 26th. It's a screening of the movie Barbarella and special guest, which we're not telling you yet. 
because we don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We always come through. We always come through. It's always entertaining. And the pop-up in the mausoleum of Ramon's amazing memorabilia yeah. and movie posters by Lethal Lamont. Yeah, and that's, uh, if you want tickets, johnnyramone.com. What was the building that we played in with Rob Zombie? That kind of, uh, it was like a, it was like a... Um, it was the mausoleum. Is, is that, that the mausoleum? No, no, that no. ain't the mausoleum. No, no that's, uh, what's it called? Uh, the Masonic Lodge. The Masonic Lodge. It's very and they Masonic. Have yeah, they have concerts there all the time, mm. Hollywood forever. It's a really beautiful space. Yeah. But it didn't work out for us because it, we, it, we had to move too much back and forth. Yeah. So I like just, you know, what you guys do, like a little acoustic set. It just yeah. changes the feeling. Yeah. You get the movie. You go look at the pop-up thing in the mausoleum of all collectibles. It's just a cool, fun night. Yeah. You know. Is Fred coming to play or is he just I don't coming? know. Did you speak to your friend, Fred? I haven't spoken to you. You haven't told me to talk to Fred. Well. I will. He said he's coming. Yeah. So we, we might as well give him a job. He's he's good. He's fun to play with, Fred. Yeah, but he's I still great. think we need someone else. Yes, that third person. Who's that special person? I, gonna be? I don't know. We've got to find one. And plus, you know what? I love that Barbarella song. So maybe we could have a girl sing. What's that Barbarella song? From the uh, beginning of the movie, Barbarella. You know what? I can't even remember. They're like cavemen, aren't they? Is it a cave woman? Back in time, Barbarella? No, well, it's sci fi. She has the best outfits and she looks amazing. Like but fur. yes. It's in the future. Fur? Are yeah. you gonna get are you are you gonna get fur people showing up saying, Why are you showing this movie? They're wearing fur. It's from the sixties, I don't know. It's been a long time ago. Yeah. And they all like Jane Fonda. And Anita Pallenberg's in it. What do, and how, how far do they go back, the the people they, like Stone Age? You can't wear fur. I I don't know. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? I'm just messing with everybody. <laughs> Why? What? Now you want the fur people after us? Don't we have enough people? <laughs> I know. I know. It's all good. <laughs> you know. But Anita Pallenberg looks amazing in the movie too. Who's the, the uh, Who's the main bird in it? It's uh, Jane Fonda. That's it, Jane Fonda. Yeah. I I don't think I've seen it in a hundred years. That movie. Well, see, that was the good thing about it. Was it's it like undergroundish. It, Kind of, and it looks so amazing on the big screen because it's so colorful and there's like, it's it's really a cool, interesting movie to watch, especially, you know, outdoors, yeah. and it's a full moon that night. Ooh. 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 So you could, you know, have well, it. Well, love is in the air. It's go it's going to be a lot of fun. And Howie Pyro will do our DJing. And we have a whole bunch of stuff going on. It's always great. Maybe I can get Cal Worthington to be the extra guest. The, is that the car guy? <laughs> and he's brown bread. We're going to visit the Duke. We're here with Linda Ramone. No, we're not. We're going to play KKK. My baby took my baby away by the Ramones. Ooh then we're going to go to, well, who knows, just play the bleeding song. <laughs> Jonesy's jukebox. Cal OS. My guest, Linda Ramone. Hello. Right. Excuse, Thank you. Excuse me. I just, That's always nice. I just had a, <laughs> some mashed potato and lentils. I know, and believe me, you could smell it. Mm? Oh, what does that mean? You didn't I, like it? No. <laughs> well, but good, that's okay. Good, I'll spray some perfume. It's a good job I weren't farting it out. I was oh. eating it. Um, Dead Boys, Sonic Medusa, we had David Bowie, Moon Age Daydream, and we had the Ramones, KKK took my baby away. What are you looking at? What's happening? I, uh, somebody was doing something. I was just looking. Uh, what did you think of the Dead Boys? Did uh, you ever see them? Um, I don't think I did see them. Mm, they were great. I saw them a weekend with the Damned yeah. at CBGB's. But I saw the Dead Boys a hundred times. They were really. Stiv was really good. Yeah. He was a good front man. Good front man. You know. Yeah. He, but he, you know, he loved Johnny Thunders, and he wound up with like Johnny Thunders jacket, and yeah. he he was good. He was funny. <laughs> Excuse me. That so you got a bunch of albums here. Yeah, some Ramones. We're going to give them away at some point. Not today, but at some point we're going to be some point, giving some, them away. Some uh, tickets for the Johnny Ramone tribute and some Ramones uh, records. And there's some, some different ones I can see. You got the first album. Yeah, just some vinyl. And you got Leave Home. 
And a bashed up rocket of Russia. Yeah. Do you play vinyl? All day long. You do? Yes. What a waste of time. I love vinyl. It sounds amazing. What do you mean a waste of time? How? It's, it's such an effort to bleed and have a record player and put the thing on. You don't just play what? it with iTunes. It's no, a lot easier. I hate I don't know. I mean, I don't mind sometimes on the phone there's like a mix. There's like these special mixes that somebody does. I don't know. Different people, you know, you put in what you like and they do a mix for you. Yeah. But no, nothing beats vinyl. Okay. I don't think. We have the record change. I like vinyl hot pants. Yeah, they were good. Hot pants were uh, hot pants was good. <laughs> they were good. <laughs> That's for sure. It was a good look. And I like blow up dolls as well. I'm sure. <laughs> now they're, they're making some crazy doll like for men. That look actually look like mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Whatever next, Lynn. I don't know. I, I mean, next. it's a crazy world, but you know, I'm still happy. I could still play vinyl. You know what's funny? I always this always pops into my head, but when I'm on the freeway. And I want to get in the carpool lane. I'm thinking of the perfect passenger, but that actually looks like a real person, not just a doll sitting there. And then a cop sees it and he's like, that's a doll. I'm pulling you over. But so someone, this is what you get. You get someone who looks like a person in the passenger seat, but they're kind of, and you get a phone and it looks like they're texting in the phone, in the passenger seat. You know what I mean? I know what you mean, but where's this going? You want fake Nothing. drivers? No, I just want to. I just oh. want to be in the carpool lane without getting pulled over. I don't drive. I don't. I I'm not talking about driving problems. the bleeding car. I'm going to be driving it. Yeah. But just so you can go in the carpool lane because it's two people or right. more for of carpool. Course, you yeah. can't go in by yourself unless you got one of them electric cars. Oh, one of those that you got to like go to a gas station and. Yeah, I w where Plug was I? I was uh, I was up I was up when I went up north. I, was, I stopped at uh, some place near uh, where's that place where um, the, the 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 movie was about with all the bikers up north. You know where they took out the wild one. What's that town called? Where the wild one was meant to be set? Oh, with Peter Fonda. No, that's easy ride. Oh. What's that oh, the place? wild one. Okay, it's a place, well-known place. Someone help me here with a computer. <laughs> she, she's with, <laughs> with a computer. I don't remember yeah. the wild one. I, I We're going to visit the dude when we come back. Anyway, the point is that ain't even important. What pulled at this gas station and round the back was about thirty electric things. From it was the Elon Musk only for the Elon Musk. Uh, mm. They were just for them cars. The Teslas? Teslas. It was like 30 of them. It looked really bizarre and futuristic and not one. It was late at night. Maybe that's right. If they get an electric car that can go a thousand miles without charging, it might be interesting. But when I, I like to do a lot of driving and I don't want to stop over for an hour to let a battery charge. It's not convenient enough. Plus, you're not saving the planet anyway <laughs> with electric car. I don't think so, but... Car fart is more... Uh, Cow fart is more. <laughs> <laughs> How do you want to save the planet? Huh? How do you want to save we, the planet? We ain't, listen, we ain't saving nothing. Me and you know. We're going to be gone before you, that. <laughs> we ain't saving We're lucky we? we're still here right now. <laughs> there's, no, there's not enough awareness. Every, everybody around us has been, you know. Yeah. I'm just happy we're alive, me and you. Yeah. You oh, know? Me too. You know, you better get your spot, though, at Hollywood Forever before they're all gone. I know. We're going to visit the Duke. <laughs> We're going to visit the Duke when we get back. A bit more rock and roll with my guest, Linda Ramone.